The eudaimonia machine has captured the imagination of many people who are interested in building more human-centered workspaces and who, more generally, care about human happiness and well-being. In my last video on the machine, I covered the Leopold, one of the most ambitious attempts to bring the eudaimonia machine to life. Unfortunately, that project had to be canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but there have been other eudaimonia machines that have cropped up in the real world. We'll cover three in this video. Number one, Story. Story, located in New York City, was a permanent pop-up shop, a 2,000 square foot space that changed its design, fixtures, and inventory on a monthly basis. For one of its transformations, the shop's founder, Rachel Schechtman, worked with David DeWayne and Aaron Dignan to convert Story into a real-life eudaimonia machine. Story's eudaimonia machine, an installation they called Workspace, was complete with a gallery, salon, office, library, and deep work chambers. The salon's wall was covered with questions from Marcel Proust's famous questionnaire, meant to inspire the conversation and debate characteristic of this space. The salon also featured a pop-up barista bar, making it the perfect place for socializing and coming up with ideas. In contrast to the salon's relaxed residential furniture, the office space featured a conference table and several desks. It also contained a digital whiteboard, opening up the potential for collaboration, and an evolving data visualization that was updated over time based on visitors' responses to questions about how they work and the future of work. The library contained over 200 books that address the problem with modern workplaces and organizations, like Radical Candor, Sprint, and Adapt. And of course, no eudaimonia machine would be complete without the Deep Work Chambers, a space where patrons were free to work. An assortment of wellness products was also placed nearby, serving as a reminder to reduce stress and social pressures prior to performing deep work. Number two, Column 5 Media. When moving to a new office space, California company Column 5 Media saw an opportunity to be intentional about how they approach their floor plan. While their space is not a one-to-one -one copy of Dwayne's original eudaimonia machine, it is heavily inspired by the machine's five spaces. Column 5's first room, their version of the gallery, is a bright, airy, and welcoming space that they call the Great Room. More of a combination of the gallery and salon, the Great Room includes the kitchen, booths, a large counter island, and auditorium seating for company meetings. Column 5 salon is their conference rooms where they do their main collaborative work, kind of a combination of the salon and office space. Here they hold meetings, entertain clients, give presentations, and brainstorm. Their library is a small space with a table, a space for books, a chalkboard, and supplies for some physical work that might need doing. The office is a standard office space with cubicles and a standard conference room with a whiteboard. Here they have assigned and unassigned desks, perfect for anyone who needs to use them. This space is reminiscent of a typical office's open floor plan. Finally, there's the deep work chambers, which column five simply calls the cavern. This is a quiet space, painted a dark blue color, where no talking or music is allowed. This is, of course, a space designated for deep work only. Column 5 sums up their eudaimonia machine nicely, saying, Each space has its own personality, but everything works symbiotically. Number 3. Houston's Eudaimonia Machine This final space was actually a proposal for a eudaimonia machine near Houston. The proposal included all of the typical elements of the eudaimonia machine, including the gallery, salon, collaborative work area or office, library, and deep work chambers. This plan also featured a couple of interesting additions, like a shower, which you would use to cleanse yourself before performing deep work in a sort of priming ritual. Similar to the Leopold, it also included a contemplative area, perfect for taking a break after hours of deep work. And that's it. These actual and proposed spaces demonstrate just how much Dwayne's concept has captured people's imaginations. These efforts to realize the eudaimonia machine perhaps represent a growing dissatisfaction with how we work and a desire to be more intentional about how we set up our working spaces. What do you think about the eudaimonia machines featured in this video? Do you have any ideas about how you would create your own eudaimonia machine? Let us know in the comments.